They're alive! They're alive! Can't you hear them? They want to be played with! They need to be played with! It doesn't matter if the entire world is burning down. The robots, the robots must be driven. <laughs> so anyways, anyways, Dojo Derby is back, mother fudders. That's right, because it's a good idea. And the world is only getting worse. <laughs> And so, you know, <laughs> screw it. It's one of those things, it's like a business person. You kind of sit there and you look at the, mar the market conditions, the macro forces, and you go, I'm going to put this on the shelf. I'm going to let it gather dust until the conditions are right. And sometimes you realize, <laughs> well, it's only going to get worse. So, so if you if you want to play with your idea, if you want to try to see if you can make your idea a reality, you might as well do it now. Uh, so Dojo Derby, basically what this is, I know this doesn't look very cool. I know this doesn't look very complicated, but this is actually a really, really cool product that I built during the fall. Um, and this is the product that I thought I would be pushing the hell out of right now until the supply chain came to raspberry pies. So basically I have this idea called Dojo Derby, right? So one of the big issues, I've been doing technology since 1996, I have my own business, I had employees, I've done tech education since 2009, I've done hundreds of one-on-one -on -one meetings with uh, people trying to get in the tech field, and one of the big problems that I've seen with people trying to get in the tech field is they don't know what problems to solve. They don't know what technology to work with, and so here's the funny thing. <laughs> Business owners and managers want to hire people that can solve problems with technology. Noobs don't know what problems to solve. And the issue you get into in the tech world is there's a lot of cool solutions out there. Again, Active Directory, clustering, data replication, disaster recovery service, cybersecurity, there's a whole bunch of stuff. But you have to be like a high enough level to understand the problems. Right? In order to really understand the value of clustering, you have to have something at scale that's large enough to need clustering. And you get into this weird chicken and egg problem with noobs of, you know, again, they need, they need to understand how to build and solve problems, but they don't know what problems to build and solve for, and you get into a mess. And so that's one of the things I've been thinking about a lot for, for years at this point. And that's where I came up with the idea with Dojo Derby. So this is actually a full compute stack. I want you to understand, when you take a look at this thing, uh, it may look like a joke, but there's a lot of technology on here. This Raspberry Pi is actually a full computer. It has a quad-core processor and it has four gigs of RAM. Uh, you can put a hell of a lot of storage, up to a terabyte of storage on this thing if you want. It has a full uh, networking stack. So it has a wired networking stack. It has a Wi-Fi stack. It has Bluetooth stack on it. You can connect a camera to it. Plus it has what, what's called GPIO pins. So these are called general purpose input output pins. So basically it can read values from sensors or outside devices. And it all, also can send commands to, to outside things. And so I had the, I, I basically came up with this idea of, hey, if all these noobs need problems to solve, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna invent a problem. We're going to invent a problem that's kind of sort of fun, right? Hey. We're going to create these little vehicles. We're going to do races. We're going to do games. We're going to do competitions. And then individuals can build their own vehicles. They can write their own code. We, we have base code for them to use, but they can modify it, hack it, do a whole bunch of different things with it. Um, and then this allows them to work with real technology. So again, with this Raspberry Pi, uh, it has a full uh, Linux distribution on here. Uh, so we use the Raspberry Pi OS, but this is a Debian. It's a Debian distribution of Linux. So it's it basically, it's a, you know, a cookie cutter replacement essentially for Ubuntu. You could put Ubuntu on here if you wanted to. You could actually put a lot of other distros on here if you wanted to. We're just using Raspberry Pi because it has some of the 
built-in drivers and things that we need for things like cameras and all that. So it has a Debian uh, distribution of Linux on it. Um, again, for what I've built here, it has a full LAMP stack, Linux, Linux Apache MySQL PHP. Um, and so when you connect to the interface to actually drive the vehicle, that is dynamically built using PHP. So PHP is a real programming language, not some, not some fake proprietary language so you can learn functions and then you have to go and learn a real language. PHP is a real language. Um, and then all of the oh, internal mechanisms, uh, driving the wheels, do it, dealing with the OLED screen, all that kind of stuff. That's actually in Python, right? So normal Python. So that, that teaches people how to use Python. Uh, then on top of that, there's some JavaScript. And as we go, we're gonna, we're gonna build a lot of other stuff on here. You can actually install OpenCV onto this. OpenCV is a computer vision uh, suite platform. You can actually even install OpenCV onto this and literally build autonomous vehicles that can do autonomous driving and autonomous task completion. And what's really cool about all this is the Python that you code for this, you can put onto uh, enterprise infrastructure. The PHP that you code for this, you can use it to build out your own websites. The open CV uh, that you use to build the autonomous vehicle, you can literally take that and go into your industrial facility and <laughs> with a lot of testing, with a lot of testing, you can actually put it there. All the technology in this little vehicle uh, once you learn it, you can take it off into the real world. There's not, it's not like, oh, this is, this is like a fake, it's not like a fake Python or a fake PHP or a fake open CV. This is all real stuff. So anyways, uh, basically at, at this point, um, what I'm going to do with this is the idea originally is that everybody would build their own, right? Um, unfortunately, we're dealing with a supply chain issue. So you may have heard of the supply chain issue. Now, the supply chain issue has, has hit uh, the Raspberry Pi 4s. And this is why I actually stopped doing this project for a while, because there's been a shortage of Raspberry Pi 4s for six months now. Um, I started seeing issues in October. In November, they officially got sold out. And it's now almost the end of April. <laughs> November, December, January, February, March, April. Uh, and they're still basically sold out. You can go to like Raspberry Pi or there's like, it's called pilocator.com. Um, and if you go there, there's like two places in the UK where you can get some compute modules. Um, but anyway, so the original idea was everybody would be able to build uh, their own vehicles um, because everything else on this is basically off the shelf commodity parts. So this is an OLED screen. A uh, hundred Chinese manufacturers create this OLED screen. You buy it for five to 10 bucks. Uh, this is your H bridge, basically your, your driver for your motors. A hundred Chinese companies manufacture this thing. You buy them for 250. The wheels, hundred different Chinese manufacturers produce the wheels. You know, wires, breadboards, camera. No, this is by... Um, Oh, what is it called? Arducam. Uh, Arducam does good stuff. Uh, it costs $10. But all of the stuff, um, other than the Raspberry Pi 4, you can just go to Amazon and you can just buy it and you can all slap it together. It's all Raspberry Pi 4 is a problem. So anyways, what I've decided is I have four, I have four of these vehicles uh, fully built out. Uh, and then I have another one I just need to slap together. So that means I have five. I have between four to five vehicles that we can actually use now. So what I've basically decided to do is just say, screw it, just do it. Sometimes when the world is burning down around your ears, you just say, do it, <laughs> you just do it. Cause what the hell else are you gonna do? So what I've decided is that I'm gonna clean up the code, clean up the code, clean up some of the stuff. And then we're gonna start doing meetups uh, here in Asheville. So my thought is I'm thinking once a week, um, at one of the breweries around here, uh, basically meet up. We have four to five. We have four to five of these things. Uh, people can come. They can learn about the Dojo Derby concept. They can learn about the vehicle. They can learn about the code. They can learn about how all this stuff works. Um, and then we can start beta, beta testing. Um, like little competitions that we can do. Like what races work? What competition can we do? Can we do soccer with these things? Like that's what I was thinking about. Get like a wiffle ball. Get a wiffle ball. Get a couple of teams and literally try to play soccer with your robot cars. That sounds good. That sounds cool on paper. <laughs> Whether or not it'll work in the real world, who knows? Again, trying to do racing. How? Like, it's one thing, that's one thing to say. Like, it's like, hey, we can race robot cars. What a lot of people don't think about is, no, there's was, there was actually, you have to build a system. Like, how does this work? How do you make it fair? Blase, blase, blase. So my thought is, uh, we'll get together uh, once a week. 
here in Asheville at one of the breweries, because breweries here, you have to understand, are like our community centers. They have lots and lots and lots of space. You can basically just come in and camp out. You can bring food if you want. If you want to bring pizza, you can just bring pizza, as long as you buy their beer. You can't bring anybody else's alcohol in, but you can drink their beer. Kids can come, young people can come, old people can come, whoever can come. We just come, we grab some picnic tables, we race some vehicles, we do some beta testing, see how all the hell this works, see if the code can be better, People can screw around with it. If you have a Raspberry Pi 4 in your basement and you think it's cool, then you can buy all the other parts uh, and build your own vehicles. And then we can try to see if this whole dojo derby thing will work. Can we, can we teach people how to actually do real technology work with little robot cars? Um, and for the people that are already doing real technology work, this gives you a way to really learn about IoT. Because uh, again, like it's not on right now, but this is an OLED screen. So this OLED screen, it turns on and it actually gives you information. Um, and of course, I don't have my battery right here. Oops, can I do this? Oh, I might be able to do this. This is really cool. See? Uh, so not only do you have a camera and all that, as I knock over my coffee and everything else, you know I always do. You know I always do one takes. And of course with this one take, oh, there we go. See, so like, you know, this, oh, see how this OLED screen? So this OLED screen actually gives you information. So currently there's no Wi-Fi connection, so it hasn't gotten its IP address yet, uh, but after a while, so there we go. So it's now got its IP address. It so shows you some commands in a text file. So what's really cool about this, again, if you're a tech professional, imagine having a little portable FTP server that can just give you the information that you want. So you could literally plug this into a local network, it grabs a DHCP address, and it could present information to you here. Uh, or if you wanted to create some kind of penetration testing tool, uh, you could have it doing ping, or you could have it doing attacks to a local network, and then you give you readouts as things are happening. Uh, so again, for even for, for like technology professionals, this can show you a lot of cool things. And again, how to trigger how to trigger motors, how to trigger electronic devices, how to trigger lights, how to trigger um, relays, servo motors, all kinds of cool stuff. So it's good for the kids, it's good for the noobs, it's good for the professionals. And that's my thought. Do you want to race robot cars? Come on now. This is a very this is a TL a TLDR here. <laughs> do you want do you want to grab a beer and race robot cars? And that's the pitch. That's the pitch. Do you want to? Uh, so, so far, so we have a meetup page, uh, link down below for the meetup page. Uh, we're also gonna have a LinkedIn page. Uh, so hopefully when people come, um, again, one of the, the things that I really feel strongly about is that there should be connections between people that don't involve me. So people can join the LinkedIn page and then when they come to the meetups afterwards, uh, they can ping each other. So people can see like ask questions on the LinkedIn page and the people know who the other people are. Uh, currently building out the website. So we have all the code and all the uh, schematics and all that kind of stuff that's that's there. So, so that's all documented. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's what's going on. I don't, do, do, come on now. Do you, do you want to grab a beer and race robot cars? It's not that hard. It's not that complicated. That's the question I've got for you. Um, if you do, uh, join the meetup. Uh, join the linked up, LinkedIn page. And we're going to start this shortly. I'm like literally thinking like next week. For me, for me, in my per timeline as I do this video, um, I'm thinking like maybe seven days. Like I'm just, I think I'm just jump into it. Just, just going to do it. Just going to go. Just going to grab a beer and race a robot car. So you want to join me? That's a question. I don't know. I'll see you there or not. <laughs> see you later. Hopefully.